Simply put, mosquitoes are kind of rubbish. As we previously discussed on this channel, we can't even use blood found in fossilized mosquitoes to clone dinosaurs, so, well, what are they good for? Not only are they an annoying pests that cause a lot of unwanted irritation and itchiness, but they're also dangerous disease vectors. In fact, some people and organizations claim that mosquitoes are the deadliest animal in the world. Forget terrifying tigers, it's the mosquito. Of course, that categorization is from a completely human-centric point of view. We are indisputable Disputably the deadliest animal in the world, killing over 72 billion chickens, nearly 1.5 billion pigs, a few hundred million cows, and even a couple of million donkeys every year for food. But those are just donkeys. Who eats donkey? It's got to be the French, right? But those are just delicious animals and donkeys. So oh, we don't care about that. We only care about the number of people that are killed. That is how mosquitoes were crowned the deadliest animal in the world, claiming anywhere from 750,000 to a million human lives every year. That is more human deaths than are caused by any other animal, including the roughly 500,000 murders that are committed worldwide by other humans each year. Half a million? Holy shit. What are we up to? Granted, this is exclusively homicide, and if we include other things like perhaps war, then people are far deadlier to each other than mosquitoes. But all of this really shows just how much people really hate mosquitoes. These insects are so universally reviled that legitimate news outlets, research organizations, and even the CDC would cherry pick statistics to prove that they are deadlier and more dangerous than even humans are. So, if everybody hates mosquitoes so much, why don't we just f***ing kill them all? Could we eliminate all mosquitoes? When it comes to extinction, nobody does it quite like us. In the past 500 years alone, humans have been responsible for the extinction of nearly 700 different vertebrate species. That is a massive number, with feral cats coming in at a distant second, with only 63 extinctions to their name. So you feral cats number one baby of course the eradication of these species on our part was almost entirely an accident extinction is usually the result of overhunting destruction of natural habitat or the introduction of an invasive species nobody actively sought to eliminate the dodo they were just stupid birds that were an easy and plentiful source of food and then all of a sudden they were gone one of the few intentional attempts to eradicate a species was by european settlers to north america they wanted to wipe out the american bison one of the native americans main food sources and means to starve the natives into submission it pretty much worked on both counts with there being fewer than 100 bison left at one point there's also the guinea worm a brutal parasite found in africa that is on the verge of extinction thanks to efforts from former president jimmy carter then of course the smallpox though this is kind of a gray area since viruses are not technically alive but look if we wiped out so many species by accident and even come really close to a few times doing it intentionally surely killing off mosquitoes should just be a piece of cake if we put our minds to it right let's do this unfortunately it's a little more complicated than that viruses tend to have a pretty short shelf life if they aren't in the host body if everybody gets vaccinated against the virus there's nowhere for it to exist and it just disappears similarly guinea worms are parasites that spread their larvae through stagnant water but these larvae can't survive long without a human host if the people have clean water to drink instead guinea worms can be eradicated as well of course bison don't use humans as hosts that would be weird <laughs> got a bison inside you <laughs> also mean something else and we almost wiped them out so well why not mosquitoes well there are only about 30 to 60 million american bison and at one to two thousand pounds each they were pretty tough to miss mosquitoes on the other hand are tiny and there's about 110 trillion of them in the world that's nearly 15,000 mosquitoes for every single person we actually have tried to eliminate mosquitoes in the past but it didn't work out particularly well the main attempts used harsh pesticides most notably ddt unfortunately it had some pretty horrible and long-lasting effects resulting in it ultimately being banned in much of the world it also wasn't going to be a good solution because uh, there's so damn many mosquitoes spread all over the world to eradicate mosquitoes using pesticide we would essentially have to coat the entire planet in poison and that's also dangerous <laughs> you got that didn't you and honestly these little would probably still find one tiny area which we somehow missed and then they'd go from there but if we can't use something like poison to brute force our way to a solution could there be a better and more nuanced way to eliminate them 
After all, it's not like we actually need to kill every mosquito in the world. There are over 3,500 different species of mosquitoes, but only about 200 of them actually bite humans. Of those, there are a specific handful that are most responsible for spreading diseases like malaria, West Nile, and Zika. With malaria, it's actually only the Anopheles mosquito that transmits the disease, and it can only do so by first biting an infected person and then biting a non-infected person. So, instead of trying to kill all 110 trillion bugs, we can just focus on this one type to start with. Technically, there are 430 types of Anopheles, and actually only 30 to 40 of these transmit malaria to people, but we're going to treat them all as one thing for simplicity's sake. It's already complicated enough. And look, there are a couple of ways that we can handle this problem. The first of which was announced in 2003 by evolutionary geneticist Austin Burt from Imperial College London. But Burt recognized that there are specific genetic elements referred to as selfish genetic elements. Genes normally come in pairs, with half of them being inherited from each parent. During reproduction, an organism will randomly pass down one gene from each pair. But instead of the normal 50% chance of being passed to offspring, these selfish genes passed to nearly 100% of offspring. It doesn't matter if the gene is beneficial or detrimental, it will selfishly force itself through the population at the expense of other genes. Those selfish genetic elements are also referred to as gene drives, and if we could engineer them to contain specific properties, we could exploit their natural process to rapidly force a desired gene to propagate through a population. It was a good theory, but it wasn't until the 2012 discovery of CRISPR-Cas9 that it actually became possible. So, now that we have the ability to utilize these gene drives, what sort of trait would we want to spread through the Anopheles population? Andrea Crisanti, also working out of Imperial College London, and had a simple solution. Insert a gene drive into male mosquitoes that would give their female offspring certain male characteristics. Most importantly, they would have male mouthparts. Because it is only female mosquitoes that are able to bite humans, the genetically altered females not only would not be able to bite us, but they would also be sterile as they need the blood for their reproductive cycle. Multiple tests have been conducted in laboratories that simulated real-world conditions, and in every test, the gene drive caused the entire mosquito population to die out in a year. Researchers believe that the gene drive would only need to be inserted into 1% of the real-world population to kill off all the mosquitoes in a single year. With a smaller group initially infected, it would take longer, potentially up to a decade, but there seems to be a general consensus that the plan would absolutely work. Even if the gene drive didn't result in the complete extinction of the Anopheles mosquitoes and the population eventually bounced back, that would probably still be fine. They can only spread malaria by first biting an infected person. If the Anopheles spends years on the brink of extinction and thus aren't spreading malaria, once the population starts to rebound, there shouldn't be any infected people left with malaria for them to bite. There's also a slight less murdery option being toyed with as well. Malaria isn't a virus, you see. It's a parasite. So what if we could program the mosquitoes' as bodies to just kill the parasite before they could transmit it from person to person? While this may be possible, it's probably a much less effective solution. Malaria is already undergoing frequent mutations to try to hide from our immune system. So adapting the mosquitoes to kill the parasites for us could potentially result in it mutating into some sort of super malaria, which would be bad. Simply killing the mosquitoes is a safer and more reliable option that we can definitely do. The only limiting factor is that because there is genetic engineering involved rather than just aerosol bottles of poison, we could only eradicate species using gene drives one at a time. But just because we can eradicate mosquitoes, or at least the ones that cause death among humans, should we? What would happen? To answer the question, yes, we absolutely should because f**k mosquitoes, a million people a year. But emotion aside, what exactly would be the consequences of eradicating? We taught us children about the delicate balance of nature and ecosystems, the circle of life. Everything has an important role in the food chain, and disrupting any part of the chain can have disastrous consequences. Things higher up on the food chain can lose their source of food and go extinct, which can cause an explosion of growth of other species. In addition to making us itch and killing us with diseases, mosquitoes Mosquitoes do play other important roles in the ecosystem as well. They pollinate flowers, and they are a source of food for frogs, bats, and other animals. If all 110 trillion mosquitoes were to suddenly vanish, in all likelihood the consequences would be utterly and completely negligible. Probably. Scientists aren't really in much agreement about this. While mosquitoes serve as both a food source for many animals and a source of pollination for plants, there is no species that relies 
solely on mosquitoes, and in many cases their roles are considered pretty minor. The areas whose ecosystems are most likely to be affected are Alaska and Russia, where mosquitoes travel in enormous, nightmare-inducing swarms. These swarms are fed on by migratory birds that may lack other abundant food sources in these locations. But remember, we don't actually need to kill all of the mosquitoes in the world. We only need to target the 6% of species that are disease vectors for humans. This would almost certainly be inconsequential for the survival of the rest of the ecosystem, and the changes would go mostly unnoticed, with one minor caveat. With all those mosquitoes gone, other insect species would rise up to take their place. There's the chance that whatever species does could become an even more deadly disease vector for humans. We can't say whether or not that's actually likely, but it is one of the fears. Wrap up. So, could we eliminate all mosquitoes? In time, yes, but we don't actually need to eliminate them all. We only need to eliminate the species that spread disease among humans, and we can absolutely do that. It will take a little bit of time, and we need to genetically engineer a solution for each species, but different teams can work on all of this concurrently, and with a concerted effort, it could probably be done in a decade or two, maybe even faster. And once that's done, what would happen? Well, most likely nothing. Some other insects would become more numerous to fill the void left by mosquitoes, but unless they were somehow more dangerous to us than mosquitoes were, we wouldn't even notice a difference. So given that this is the case, why haven't we done this yet? The technology has already been proven in labs, so why aren't we unleashing it into the world to save everybody from malaria, yellow fever, Zika, and the other diseases that claim up to a million lives every year? Well, it all comes down to stupid morality. Apparently, there are people that have some sort of moral hang-up on using gene drives to eradicate an entire species off the face of the planet. However, there is a very interesting thing that you'll notice when it comes to these discussions, and that's how heavily they focus on the topic of mosquitoes. Everyone is concerned over the morality of killing off entire species of insects, or the effects that it could have on the poor frogs that would have to eat different bugs instead, and well, probably wouldn't notice or care. We've spent this entire episode talking about killing off mosquitoes, so you may not be surprised that the moral discussion is focused entirely around them. But there is another important piece of this that isn't being talked about. Nobody seems to give a shit about the malaria parasite going extinct, just like the eradication of smallpox and guinea worms. People don't have a single moral objection to killing off malaria. And that would be the entire point of this. The mosquitoes are just a means to an end. If we aren't going to have some sort of ethical crisis over eradicating malaria, then we should be willing to accept the deaths of all those mosquitoes as collateral damage. Besides, there are 110 trillion of them. We only need to get rid of 6%. Sure, there may be some unforeseen consequences, but are they really going to be worse than a million human deaths every single year?